Hello, and welcome to the Albright Scholar for June 2020. My name is John Pankratz. I teach history at Albright, and each month it's my privilege to welcome BCTV viewers and residents of Greater Reading to take a glimpse inside our learning community up here on North 13th Street, to look at the work being done by students and teachers, and to think about its impact on all of us. Well, it's summertime, and I know people think that academic institutions take a break during the summer, but longtime viewers of the Albright Scholar know that that is not the case at our liberal arts college. Uh, it's an era, uh, a moment of great activity and intellectual intensity, uh, thanks largely to our ACRE program, the Albright Creative Research Experience. Uh, over the summer, I'm gonna have a number of students and uh, colleagues who are involved in this uh, wonderful research uh, effort, and we're gonna hear about the exciting projects that they're pursuing. Uh, I have three wonderful friends uh, on uh, the show today. Um, in, in my uh, lower left uh, is my dear colleague, Kristen Woodward, professor of art, uh, a wonderful painter, an absolute treasure in the Albright community. Uh, she has won every award for teaching and uh, creativity that the college has to offer. Uh, she's a nationally exhibited uh, artist and someone whose uh, intellectual reach uh, extends beyond the canvas and beyond the, uh, the studio. So Kristen, welcome. Thanks, John. What an introduction. You're, you're, you're working with Faith Mirovich, uh, who is a, a rising uh, senior and who is a multimedia artist, uh, a real presence on campus, somebody who I see around with a video camera and with a still camera, uh, but also someone with enormous uh, ability uh, in uh, graphic arts and, uh, and that sort of thing. And she has a, a, a little tropical friend with her. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, sorry. He's more quiet when he's getting attention. So I figured this was the best. Uh, well, way I think that's done. fabulous. I think it takes, us, it takes us down to Costa Rica, which we're going to talk about <laughs> bit, uh, as well. So Faith, w welcome to you. Uh, Hi. Yes, thanks for then, having me. Great. And then up in the uh, upper left, uh, we have Ryan Kelly, who's a rising senior uh, political science and French major, uh, uh, and, a re uh, and, and also a soccer player, as you can tell by his jerseys uh, hanging up there uh, as well. Uh, and Ryan is working uh, with Nathan Hensroth uh, on a, a research project having to do with, what, political aspirations and congressional speech making as well. So we'll talk about that in detail. Uh, but uh, let me ask, uh, actually, the, the two students first. Um, why do this? Uh, I know this summer doesn't have all the opportunities for fun or work that you might otherwise have, but what, what was the particular appeal of doing a, a summer acre research rather than taking a break from school? Would you like to go first or should I? Uh, you got it. <laughs> okay, so um, to answer your question, I wanted to do this. Um, I was initially was approached by Christian Woodward because we had similar experiences um, of Costa Rica and we wanted to work um, with our projects there. So um, that was sort of the inspiration that started it. And the reason why I pursued, I, I'm sorry, no, the reason why I pursued, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> The reason why I pursued this with Kristen Woodward is so that I can um, work with her uniformly on a project and gain research and understanding of Costa Rica and ex experience what it's like to collaboratively work with a teacher, I mean, a professor at Albright. Instead of having a teacher-student relationship, it is more like a collaborative effort to um, accomplish a common goal. A common goal. So that was um, important to me to have that experience to work on a project and to see what I can make with um, the experience of working with a professor. Yeah, so you're really drawn to that sustained effort over a solid 10 weeks, working yes. every day, having your mind focused on that, and then yes. being able to really create something out of it. Me. Yes. Ryan, what about you? Well, for me, honestly, um, there's like multiple reasons why this worked out so perfectly to have kind of the Acre Project and to get accepted for my Acre Project. One was that, well, with everything going on, um, it was really, like, like, it was hard, like, to find internships and stuff. 
Um, and then, so I'm trying to find summer, like summer work. And um, I, don't, I didn't know much about the Acre program, honestly, before I talked to my advisor, Dr. Amato, and he pretty much suggested that like, I should look into doing a research, an Acre project. And after doing research, I, I was like, oh, well, this actually would work out perfectly for me. Also, because um, especially at the time, I was looking into trying to get my PhD in political science. And so kind of having this background in political science research, which is like what someone with an actual PhD and that and Dr. Hens, this is a the work the project that I'm doing is an actual project that Dr. Hensroth had been working on before. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so getting kind of this background in political science research would have been perfect for me in trying to pursue that PhD. Um, uh, so yeah, like honestly, it worked out perfectly being able to have uh, have this opportunity to look into what an actual political scientist would be doing. Um, if I did eventually get that PhD and, um, and then having, uh, something to keep me occupied this summer. (laughs) Sure. Sure. Is this likely to turn into a senior honors thesis then? We'll see. (laughs) Um, yeah, cause I am graduating a semester early. Um, and so I'd like to, uh, do an honors thesis. Um, and we'll see. I, I'm hoping and I can find a way to be able to do it in the spring. Uh, okay. so that I don't, because so, with, with soccer going on and um, with regular school going on in the fall, uh, it'd be nice if I had the opportunity to be able to do my honors thesis in the spring, right. if that's possible at all. Okay. Well, we won't work that out on the team. Yeah. <laughs> that might be doable. Uh, Kristen, what about from the faculty point of view? What's the attraction of uh, doing this 10 weeks of intensive work with the student. I know you've done several acres in the past. I have, but I actually haven't done one in several years. And I think there are a couple models. Some of my colleagues have a sustained research program and they can bring students in like every summer and it's a continuation of an idea. Mm-hmm. Whereas because they- Often in the sciences, it is a yeah, cumulative sure. experience. And that model works really well. Um, but for me, it seems like art making is a very kind of solitary activity. And so if I'm going to get involved in an acre project, it's because the particular student and I share either kind of an aesthetic, conceptual, um, some motivation that brings us together. I can't just plug any student into, into my work. Um, but when Faith started working with imagery from Costa Rica, I just saw how it dovetailed so naturally into what I was already doing. So it didn't seem much like a stretch for us to make a proposal about how we could collaborate. Right. I, uh, if, if my computer works, and we're going to find out if it does, uh, I'm going to share my screen and show, show some images uh, of both yours and Faith's. And let's see if we can do that. Share. Yeah, we'll co- go up and this... This is one of your uh, works, a painting that uh, Kristen created. Uh, and it's a long series of, uh, of working with uh, animal I- uh, imagery. And then Faith is, is also interested in uh, canines and felines uh, <laughs> as well. And here's some early sketches that Faith has worked on in, in sort of an uh, animated figure, right? This is a, a character in an ongoing narrative that, uh, right. that you've uh, created. And so you've got these two artists uh, working with this animal Im- imagery, working with spirit and character uh, in these animals, but also the sense of uh, personality uh, as well. Uh, and then here are uh, members of the Baruca community in Costa Rica and their own hand-carved masks and another view of uh, a ceremony that you got to witness, uh, yeah. Kristen. Those are absolutely remarkable. And, and then my discovery was that this uh, jaguar figure here uh, is also the jaguar figure, almost the, uh, the uh, related pose that he's, that he's got. 
Yeah, Faith and I were both really interested in transformation and the idea of these animal-human hybrids. And even though our work is stylistically very different, that underpinning remains a common thread. And the Baruchal performances are also involved in this kind of shamanistic um, transition between human and animals. So, you know, we're doing a lot of reading and uh, discovering even more now that we've started the acre. Yes. Great. No, I, I, it, it just struck me that you are coming at this issue in this question uh, in slightly different ways, but it is the same question. And uh, I know, uh, Kristen, you, you have always worked in sort of richly, deeply layered kind of uh, approaches, uh, building up uh, imagery and then imagery on top of that. And so getting at transformation uh, uh, in, through that technique uh, and, and faith, uh, here you see you know, personality. It's, it's not simply uh, this canine head, but an arched eyebrow and a glint in the eye and uh, a little extra uh, personality in the smile as well. So the, the idea of spirit inhabiting uh, an animal uh, body as well is, uh, is strong. How great. Uh, okay. uh, what, what is the product going to be? So uh, I think maybe I could answer this question. Um, the product, uh, so what you're seeing with my work is definitely not necessarily 100% related to uh, the Costa Rica project, but it certainly uh, has to do with my style and my, um, my uh, interest in having a human and animal hybrid and having these sort of working with animalistic characteristics as symbolic uh, for um, having a message or having a uh, ha yes having a message sort of come across so as far as the product goes it's interesting it, it would look possibly more similar to the um, painting that you saw uh, of the encaustic work that uh, Kristen Woodward was doing um, so that that is probably more uh, akin to what the final product will look like it's a parallel body of work we're not working on the same painting right. um and we are hoping to produce at least three paintings and that will uh have to do with our imagery of costa rica and the knowledge we learn from the research um and that is that is pretty much what we're working on um great now both of you have been to to costa rica but at different moments right yes. with different yeah. moments. yes um would you like to take this or yeah. should i Either one. Yeah, so I think, you know, I was talking to her about right, the... of course, has, has a, an installation, a property in Costa Rica. Right. And a number of uh, classes, both in biology and environmental studies, but other fields as well, uh, have invited faculty and students down there during interims and during summers and spring breaks even, I think. Yes. So when I was there, I was there to help <clears throat> make a promotional video for Albright College for their um, academic research uh, having to do with uh, the, the biology students. Um, so I was there because the students were doing field research and I was there to refilm them the whole time. Uh, I uh, loved the experience um, and it was a lot of hiking. It was a lot of um, basically going into the jungle and learning everything you can about the ecology while carrying a camera. It was very interesting. I actually got to meet with the Baruca um, with the company that flew us down there because they also the company also wanted to have their own promotional video. So that was kind of the trade off. And um, so as we were as I was down there, I um, I met with the Baruca, but they weren't doing performances at the time right. because they have a strict schedule and that aligns with their beliefs. But I did get to hold one of the masks. And it, it doesn't really show in the pictures, but it's extremely light. It's made from this really light material. Oh. And it's carefully painted, very, very carefully painted. And they're absolutely beautiful. They use real macaw feathers. It's, it's gorgeous. They really are. Um, so I was inspired from the get-go to, to somehow work with this, um, this, you know, imagery of Costa Rica from the ecology, from the, um, Baruca mass, from the environment that I was seeing all around me, um, uh, the sights, the, the, the sounds, even the smells, I would say, but taking that into a visual format is what I was curious about. And as I started working with, uh, 
the visual information, Christian was like, oh, hold up. <laughs> Let's work together on this. <laughs> yeah. oh, great. Well, we, we, we can't wait to see. And, and frankly, I want to see these works in, in, in person. In some ways, two-dimensional uh, images sometimes can be shown on the screen and you have a sense of what people have done. Uh, but I know certainly in, in, in Kristen's work, uh, the three-dimensionality of it, the, the depth is really important and, and seeing it in person is, is, uh, is, a, good, is a good thing. Um, artists can be solitary. What, what about political scientists? Do you, uh, is working sort of in your own space and then communicating with uh, Dr. Hensroth, is that working out for you? Yeah, honestly, it's, it's working out fine. Um, a lot of the work that we are doing can be done uh, individually and independently, uh, which is also kind of nice because it's, it's really hands-on. Um, and so like me and Dr. Hensroth will communicate um, on occasion, but really it's only just to uh, talk about what we've been finding ourselves. Yeah. Um, we, we, so, should, uh, we should clarify that you're, you're researching uh, congressional speech making among people who have gone on to uh, seek a uh, higher office, right? Yeah, so we're, we're trying to see if, if um, people who do the, well, all, all Congress people do, do floor speeches, sure. but we're trying to see if there's any like correlation or relationship between these one minute floor speeches that uh, Congress people can do and it, whether or not they uh, have ambitions for higher office and whether they use these, use these floor speeches more if they're going to run for higher office. And, I, and actually uh, we have some pr preliminary results that we have found show that um, people actually do. Um, and well, so this is, this is based on like, we still need to get the whole data set, but based on what we have so far, um, we can kind of get, get the sense that uh, people who do make these one-minute floor speeches tend to have higher ambitions or do more of these floor speeches, have higher ambitions for higher office. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's, we, can, uh, we can both be doing our own separate things and then kind of just coordinating. Uh, and then, yeah, so it's, it's all pretty independent, which is, which is nice because it's very hands-on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and are you looking at videos of these floor addresses or are you looking at the text or both? So what, what we'll be looking at is kind of uh, just on, on the C-SPAN website, they have like a record of the one minute floor speeches. So it's more so the data than the actual speeches themselves and okay. collecting that data. Um, and then also, but looking at the literature that has already been um, done on uh, one minute floor speeches, and then kind of taking that uh, previous literature by other political scientists and then uh, incorporating and making it into uh, uh, our kind of fitting it to our own arguments. Uh, yeah. So in some ways you're gonna uh, work up a, a statistical categorization or, or generalization about these, these speeches? Yeah, yeah. so it, it will be, we'll be running, yeah, we'll be running statistical testing on it um, and just trying to find that statistical correlation in the end um, between these floor speeches and uh, uh, the floor speeches that happen and are being recorded on C-SPAN and then seeing if those, uh, those same Congress people were running or had high ambitions for higher office. Yeah. I think probably even an old-fashioned literary rhetorical analysis, I bet you'd be able to spot ambition on the part of uh, certain members of Congress. You could just hear in the tone of the address and the, the, the words that they choose. Uh, yeah, that, I, I'm sure, yeah, that, that's, the, uh, that's the thought. And I'm sure that once like, we start going through all the literature, because that's what I'm doing right now, actually, is I'm collecting kind of the, uh, the old political science research or um, the previous science research related to one minute floor speeches mm -hmm. and once I start going through all those and um, kind of getting a sense of what other people have said about it I have a feeling that we'll kind of we'll start to find that these floor speeches do have an impact on you know the ambitions of uh, uh, the Congress people yeah yeah um, I know that uh, I should I should say that there are 16 uh, Albright students who are pursuing ACRE research this summer, which is, is great. I'm so glad that that uh, program is uh, alive and well and thriving, even in our uh, uh, 
time of pandemic. I know that some kinds of projects uh, couldn't go forward. Uh, in, in some cases, the working conditions uh, wouldn't be consistent with uh, uh, the health. And so uh, some acre proposals uh, were denied on the basis of safety. Um, but uh, still many different things are, are, are going on. Uh, both of your projects seem to be pretty well adapted to uh, isolated pursuits, personal pursuits, and then coming together uh, for communication and trading insights and sharing. It's, uh, it's interesting. It seems like, um, in, in our case, our project, it, from the get-go, was able to do that. I mean, we do miss the ability to work physically alongside each other and ch exchange ideas. Um, our pursuit is, um, in a way, um, begins uh, individually, and then we collaborate uh, when we meet together on uh, critiques and sort of concepts like that. So it, it is interesting that we were able to still do that. Um, my heart does go out to the students that weren't able to um, complete their acres due to um, the to COVID. But um, yeah, so uh, luckily we were very fortunate to have a position where we could do this um, from our homes remotely. Oh. Yeah, the fortunate thing about political science research is that it can pretty much all be done remotely um, uh, with online databases containing all this previous literature. I mean, uh, you go on to Google Scholar and find just a plethora of different uh, research that's already been conducted on one minute floor speeches and then uh, uh, and then being able to have access to the C-SPAN website where we can get our data and then having the, um, the ability to have uh, the um, statistical software um, to run the testing. Uh, all of it can be done online. Um, and then being able to meet with Dr. Hensroth on like, platforms like Zoom, um, it, it, wor it worked out. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have the full acre experience where we're on campus and, you know, uh, in that same learning environment but uh we were very fortunate to have uh to have this this type of project but e e even your projects are ultimately dependent on digital technology yeah. uh, it used to be you would have had to travel to the library of congress to find the the records that you're looking at or you would have had to be be in the same studio in order to to be able to see what the other person was doing yeah. uh so um in, in, in some ways, modern technology has made us more able to weather uh, this pandemic and the, and the isolation than we otherwise would have been. Uh, yes, yeah. Let, uh, let me actually call up my thing again here and we will look at some of the other projects that are out, out there. Um, Here we go. Uh, Crystal Paris, who could not be with us, uh, is working with Dr. Joycelyn Burdett on the remarkable American uh, fashion, uh, Anglo-American fashion designer, Charles James. And I think uh, she's going to find out uh, all sorts of things there. Um, let's find out what other people are doing. Uh, Matthew Ortiz is working with Matt Fotis in the theater department. Uh, and they're working on an improv project. Yes, and creating an improv curriculum to help children with ASD increase their social and behavioral communication skills. Uh, and again, I think that's gonna be a, a, a fascinating thing uh, to watch. Improv works better if you can be together, uh, of course, as well. Uh, Julie Shrey, who has been on uh, the Albright Scholar before, uh, talking about it, her research in viruses, uh, is working with Adam Hersberger, understanding the nature and function of the epidermal growth factor ortholog expressed in ectromelia virus. Uh, that is not a coronavirus, it is a mouse pox uh, virus, and so it's safe, it's not going to uh, infect uh, humans. But uh, as I told Julie, uh, this is an, uh, an incredible time to be studying viruses because there's so much. Uh, desperate energy and uh, important investment uh, in trying to understand those. Uh, I should mention too, uh, for my viewers, if you want to visit the Albright College website, 
uh, albright.edu, uh, you can find a series of uh, discussions with Adam Hersberger and the college physician uh, about the current uh, pandemic. A uh, little extra scientific insight into the nature of viruses. Uh, in communications, Jacob Craig and uh, Heidi Mao are looking at the design philosophies uh, in eight different countries. And this is graphic design in, uh, in terms of uh, visual communication. Uh, student Daniel Petersheim and uh, Nick Hero uh, are working in uh, the, the field of organometallic uh, chemistry and are studying uh, ambiphilic ferrocene bridged ligands for metals with expanded coordination spheres. Uh, I will have them on the show and they will explain exactly what that means. Uh, uh, again, that's one of those cases where uh, Kristen said uh, certain faculty have ongoing projects that uh, benefit from collaboration over the years. Uh, and so Daniel Petersham uh, has come in uh, in that regard. Uh, Stephanie Vargas Hemmings and Mi uh, Oronk uh, in the fashion department are studying sustainable fashion, uh, upcycling, reusing, uh, and sustainability. Uh, fashion is a fascinating topic in the time of coronavirus as well. I'm not actually wearing shoes, for example. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Vasquez and Beth Keister uh, are studying uh, status, detention, and deportation uncertainty among uh, immigrant communities uh, in the US. And Beth has done a number of acres since she's been here. And I know that Jennifer Vasquez is a very able and energetic student. Whoops, I didn't mean to cut down that quickly. Uh, Emily Lenkovich uh, is uh, one of two students working with Steve Mack uh, in biology and she's uh, looking at plant animal relationships. So she may have some things to say to Kristen and, uh, and Faith uh, uh, as well, studying the effect of non-native microstigium uh, verminium on small mammals and insects. That is, how do these animals work with invasive plant species? Do they like them or not? We'll find out. Uh, Abigail Shoemaker is also working with Steve on the short and long-term effects of anthropogenic habitat disturbance on the geographic range distribution of Terrapinae carolina, or the eastern box turtle. Uh, Kokol was out hiking near Antietam Lake and saw several box turtles. Uh, Susan Spriggs and Ian Cost are working on a comparative analysis of the remote touch mechanism in birds. And this is almost as magical as the Baruca in Costa Rica. Uh, <laughs> because there are birds who are able to poke their little beaks down into um, foliage or into the underbrush and sense that there are animals that are there without touching the animals, but they can just sort of feel with their beaks that a little bit of prey uh, is available to them. Um, Natalie Buck uh, in education and mathematics is working with Denise Meister uh, looking at the Algebra 1 Keystone exam, its purpose, five-year results, and remediation uh, efforts. Uh, Jaquan Harley and Amy Green, again in biology, are uh, looking at inhibition of contractile vacuole cycling in Vorticella uh, convallaria. Uh, so that is cellular uh, biology at a very micro level. And then I think there are two more projects. Uh, Dana Fielding and D Justin Couchman are looking at the effects of virtual reality and stress on the misinformation effect. Well, that sounds like current events, doesn't it? Uh, we're all stressed, we're all misinformed. And then finally, Brooke Schlott and Gwen Seidman are studying narcissism and attributions of blame following romantic relationship uh, breakups. Uh, so a wonderful range of, of uh, topics here that we're going to be learning about over the summer and, and hearing about uh, more. Um, as, you, as you look over those, uh, I know that you've uh, 
met the other uh, acre participants over Zoom already, and will continue to during over the uh, during the summer. Uh, are there particular topics that you're looking forward to finding out about, either that your friends or new friends are doing? Um, I'm really interested to see how the improv uh, acre uh, turns out. I actually am a part of the Albright uh, improv. Uh, and it's been a wonderful experience because I'm not so much a, um, well, at least when I was younger, especially, I was a really introverted, um, not really a pre people person. I've since grown, thanks also to the people here at Albright and through improv, to be more well-spoken, to be more um, of a people person. So understanding people and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I, to see that it is helping um, children and I think it said it was it adolescents that's um, um, that have um, you know social disability in one way or another mm -hmm. to, in order to um, help them with that with improv sounds amazing I, I think it's very um, possible that it, it, it will help um, students and um, children that need that help so I'm excited to see how that turns out yeah, no, I, re I really wish Matt and Matt uh, uh, good luck on that. I'm looking <laughs> forward to talking with them. Uh, Ryan, what about you? There's definitely a lot of really interesting projects like being being done for this acre project. I think, though, what I'm really interested to see the results of is the one about the Keystone exams, um, mm -hmm. especially being like kind of interested in education policy. Uh, It'd be interesting to see what the actual impact of the Keystone exams have been having on students. And I have my own ideas on <laughs> what, <laughs> on the impact they've had, seeing as I've had to take them being a student in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, so it would be interesting to see what results uh, Natalie gets out of that. Uh, yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see those, those findings. Excellent. Uh, Kristen, do you have one that you're anticipating? Well, I was just thinking as you're going through them how interesting it is that we can have so many cross-disciplinary projects. Because yes. there is one aspect of our Baker project that we didn't get to yet, and that's the fact that um, Dr. David Osgood and I will be team teaching a new course combining drawing and fieldwork. And our hope was to take students to Costa Rica, and that's been approved by our curriculum committee as a new synthesis course. So part of our Acre project, in addition to making artwork, is to develop some studio art projects that could be applied to this course that's going to be cross-disciplinary. And Faith has the unique um, position of being an Albright student who's had biology and studio courses, which I have not. I was not trained to have a broad liberal arts education. So I'm really relying on um, her insights into that and my other colleagues in biology as to how we can connect our disciplines. Oh, that's fabulous. Um, in the 19th and certainly in the 18th century, uh, naturalists did not yes. go out with a big, heavy camera. I bought a new lens at right. the start of quarantine. And right. wonderful, but it weighs a ton. Right. I, I, it occurred to me, what if I had just a little sketch pad and a little pencil and was just looking very carefully at that plant or looking at that bird very carefully and then drawing what I could see in and transferring that knowledge to my hand and eye, not, not simply to the machine. Uh, I think that's going to be amazing. Great. It is. I think it's one of the exciting things about being at a liberal arts college is that I don't just kind of hide away in the arts department and the painting studio. You know, I'm out connecting not only with other students and colleagues in these projects, but we can see how our research can complement each other when we're kind of immersed in a different environment. Yeah, and that, that, of course, has been your pattern throughout in your wonderful team teaching efforts with both Becky and, and, and with Betsy uh, as well. Yeah. In the past. I just hope we can take students to Costa Rica. It's a little bit up in the air right now what's going to happen with our travel restrictions, so fingers crossed on that. We'll have to see. There's uh, uh, Sydney Dan Curvis is an Albright graduate who uh, is teaching in, uh, in Costa Rica, and I think she's prolonged her stay there simply because I think she's probably safer there than she would be traveling back to Pennsylvania. Sure. So I think she's doing very, very well as, uh, as well. Um, now, uh, uh, Ryan, uh, I, you mentioned that uh, 
Dr. Hensroth has been uh, studying this uh, transition from congressional speech making to fu uh, political futures uh, already. Are, are, are you going to come in as a joint author on some sort of research paper, do you think? Or? That's the goal. Um, we're hoping to get some publications out of, out of this research. Um, yeah. And so after we're done, uh, the, whole, the whole goal, uh, Dr. Hensroth has told me um, that he only, uh, that he wants to pers pursue uh, getting, publica uh, getting publications in um, uh, political science journals. And he hopes that out of the data set that we're going to create, um, that we could be maybe even get multiple publications out of it because we're going to be putting together a pretty large data set. And the hope is that we can get multiple observations out of the, uh, the um, stats that we do collect. Um, so the hope is at least a publication for the research on the one minute floor speeches and hopefully even getting an opportunity to broaden um, our research. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. No, when, when I looked at the whole uh, list of participants and the topics that they were pursuing, uh, once again, my my spirits were buoyed by that because uh, uh, the acres are very uh, dear to my heart and it's, it's, it's good that uh, that's an element of our uh, close supportive liberal arts <laughs> process that's, that's continuing and uh, uh, growing and, and bearing fruit. Uh, good. Uh, I think I've learned a lot already this morning. Uh, I'm delighted to see uh, all of you and um, share a little bit of what you're beginning to do. And uh, we'll check in with you as the summer develops and I'll, I'll report to our uh, BCTV viewers uh, how you're progressing as well. Good. Thanks, John. Thanks to all of you for, uh, for being with, with me. And, and thanks to you for watching as, uh, as well. Uh, as you can see, uh, summer is a very active time at Albright College. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in another month for another edition of the Albright Scholar. So long. <laughs>